nine seasons in a row. A win today, four-game lead with four to go, and a win in the head-to-head -head would give Portland the Pacific Division title. The Lakers would pull within two with a victory of their own today. Now, last year at this time, two and two, Portland won. Riley didn't use all of his players. The Portland fans and team want a knockout right now, don't they? They want a knockout. They want to show that they really are the bullies of the block and that they are the bad guys that beat. This will bring them into the national limelight as well. So Portland definitely wants to win today. The Lakers' Byron Scott, a starting guard, did not practice yesterday. Let's see if he will play this afternoon. We go to Joel Myers. Dick, I was in the Laker locker room just a few minutes ago, about an hour ago, in fact. Byron Scott was taking electronic stimulation besides therapy from trainer Gary Vitti. I just spoke with Gary Vitti about three, four minutes ago. He said Byron Scott will start, but you may see Terry Teagle seeing appreciable minutes as well. Teagle, don't forget, is coming off his... Los Angeles to establish their own rights in the Northwest, ready to cheer every move by Portland. It's Worthy with the opening tip. And Worthy's the go-to man for the NBC. Dick, what they want to do is get James Worthy in the ball game early. Starting this ball game like he did in L.A. with an air ball, but he had a huge first half down there with 20. We'll see how it works today. Drexler inside corner. Open is Buck Williams. Williams second in the league in field goal percentage to Robert Parrish of Boston. Magic looking inside to Perkins. Williams bumping Perkins. The left-hander from North Carolina is short. Gets it back. And it's stolen away. And a foul on Williams reaching in. He got the ball, but he got the wrist as well. Buck Williams from Maryland. Traded last year from New Jersey. Fans feel that Williams doesn't get a fair call against the Lakers. You heard that even from the cab drivers. <laughs> Worse than that is the crowd reacts is that Sam Perkins is going to get to the line. They felt that there was no foul. What the Trailblazers will have to guard here early is being too hyper, too excited. There were two Trailblazers fighting for that ball. It got back in the hand of Sam Perkins. That's how he ends up on the line. Perkins averaging 13 and a half a game, fourth for the Lakers. And he ties it at two. Porter brings it in from Wisconsin Stevens Point. Small college strength of the starting five for the Blazers. Drexler from Houston. One of his patented drives is batted right in Magic's face, but it jams to Perkins. Now Magic 24 from the record held by the great Oscar Robertson. Cincinnati Royals and Milwaukee Bucks days. Divas sometimes disappears for the Lakers. They don't get it off for 24 seconds. Buzzer denies. Good defense for Portland. Duckworth for 15. Byron Scott tips to Magic. Tempo is very important in this ball game for the Los Angeles Lakers. They don't want to get an up and down game, and in the last two possessions, they've been very deliberate about what they want to do, and that forced a turnover on the shot clock. Evans with a fine pass. Perkins is fouled. Appeared to be Kersey reaching in from the backside. His first. Scott was yelling over at Steve there the, the magic that shoot and uh, didn't hear the call. The the passing that the Lakers had last time in this possession that got Sam Perkins through the line is the kind that you want that ex exemplifies good ball movement. Not the kind that goes around the perimeter, but the kind that goes to the basket. And you got Sam Perkins cutting through the hoop on the line. Looking for four in a row. And has it for the fourth to a lane. Inside Duckworth. He backs over the shoulder. Gets the hold. A 
Scotty had been a real slump uh, rebounding. Hadn't been in double figures for over a month until he got a dozen against Utah on Thursday night in the Laker win. Wide open as well. Williams has all four Portland points. has all six of the Laker points. Well, we have an ACC shootout right now. <laughs> Maryland, North Carolina. Terry Porter is really a real catalyst for the Trailblazers. And the way he pushes the ball up the court determines whether they're going to get into an open court game. Mercy on the drive. Duckworth battling Magic comes up with a rebound and then steps on the baseline. He's another one of the small college products, Eastern Illinois. In his fifth year now with the Blazers after coming uh, from San Antonio and a Walter Berry deal. Lakers lead 6 4. James Worthy. Divots gets the offensive rebound. Perkins. Divots off the glass and it's 8 to 4 Los Angeles. The first points for Vlade. Drexler for three. The glide is in the book. 8-7, L.A. They want to make Portland make a decision right here. Either double Worthy and make him make a pass or turn him loose. Williams with a rebound. Porter stops for three. was just on the line and Portland leads 9 to 8. Adelman still calling for a three on the sidelines. A little soft hook from Magic and he has his first points. Johnson and his coach Mike Dunleavy both agree that Portland is the fastest team in the NBA. Quickness is accented on this athletic group for the Blazers. They have rebounding at all positions. They finally get a chance to run. Drexler. Well, they get there in a hurry and Drexler gives the Blazers a three-point lead. The crowd loves them on the run. things that this crowd is doing is making it difficult for Magic Johnson and Dunleavy to communicate on this side of the floor. Magic likes to either come across the middle or make a pass to the other side. Worthy misses again. Perkins bats it out of bounds. Worthy is 0 for 5. He's had starts like this, but they will keep coming to him because he is their big game player, and if he raises his level of play, so do the rest of the Lakers. Worth too much for Divots, but misses the inside play. Johnson with the Lakers on the run to Byron Scott. Scott's first hoop, and it's 13-12 Blazers. 6.35 left in the opening quarter. Drexler from three-point range. He's got two in a row, has ten in the quarter to lead all scores. Sixth time is the charm for Worthy, his first. 16-14, Portland. Drexler, three times three. Scott can't answer. Here come the Blazers. Oh, a steal by Scott, and they had a man down court. Just under six minutes. Portland with its biggest lead, five. Magic working on Drexler. Gets, no, it doesn't go in. And here come the Blazers the other way. Deflected by Worthy. And all alone is Magic at the other end. And good things come to those who wait. Magic had a good drive, got denied. They turn it over, and he never got to the other end of the floor. Porter. Jamming the ball inside, and Worthy comes up with a steal. And it's D-Box racing down court. Knocked away by Kersey. What a hustle. Jerome Kersey. I'm out. Jerome Kersey.
Yes, he never quits on a play. That reminds all those Laker fans of what Michael Cooper used to mean to the Los Angeles. Into the transition game with the Lakers don't want to see. They want to keep the Lakers contained and in a half-court game, shooting the ball over the top. But the surprise is three. Three-point field goals from Drexler. I'm sure Mike Dunleavy has said, I think we may have to guard him today. Does, does any team in the league integrate that three-point effort better than Portland? It just seems part of their system. Nothing special. When it's there, they pop it. They they take it more than anybody. It's integrated in their offense. The only other team that comes close are the Houston Rockets. 19-16, the home team Blazers. Worthy with eight. Now you count the number of times they come back to this man because they realize they need him. Big rebound, Kersey. Uh, it was Kersey who rebounded, and it was Kersey who denied the easy two by Divac before the commercial break. That was a certain two and denied by Jerome. Porter, who already has six assists in this quarter, to Duckworth, make it seven. Kevin Duckworth, his first bucket. Magic for three. Yes, feel the groans go down in Portland on that three. 21-19 Blazers. Magic just looked at the scoreboard. He wants to keep the Lakers close. He knows that Portland wants to get off to a big start and keep this crowd involved. Put a psychological collar on the Lakers. Drexler, two more, and he now has 15 first quarter points. 23-19, Blazers, 4-15 to go in the quarter. Another miss by Worthy, wanted a foul. Order to Drexler. by Divots off the leg of the Lakers. Whenever you see Clyde Drexler, you know it's impromptu, and you never know how good it's going to be, but that's a sensational drive taken away by Vladi Divac. Divac, who leads the Lakers in blocks, that was his 120. Divac said, Kersey, I remember you. You got me the last down. <laughs> Los Angeles down by four on this trip. 3.45 left in the first period. The Perkins. 23-21, eight for Sam Perkins to lead Los Angeles. Percy over Divac, Sam draws the foul, and that'll be the second on Vlade. Pick and roll, that has been a staple for the... 24-21, the Blazers. Worthy rested after a 1-for-8 start. Byron Scott. Byron. And the Lakers are within one. That is the Byron Scott that used to be a killer uh, for the Trailblazers. And if Scott can continue to have a afternoon like that, the Trailblazers certainly will have to make big adjustments. Laker foul, and with it, a timeout with 2.57 remaining in the first period of a one-point game. Opportunity to watch him grow and mature as a player at Oregon State as well. Yes, I did. And Oregon State, right on through to the Lakers here. Now, is it difficult coming in here? You may be one of the only ones pulling for the Lakers a little bit here. No, I don't think it's difficult. <laughs> no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> now, your wife was telling me before the game, Leola Green was telling me she does not mind those trips down to Los Angeles, not only the Laker games to Los Angeles, but also those shopping expeditions. I love it. I love it all. <laughs> Sounds like Randy Newman's here. She loves L.A. Back to you, Dick. All right, Joel. And there, of course, Portland fans the rest of the time. The steal by Byron Scott. And Porter takes it right back but loses it out of bounds. Just a post grip on A.C. Green, the senior. He was a club boxer, and uh, A.C. Jr. said when he was a little kid, he used to put on his boxing robe. He said it was all green with gold, gold trim, had A.C. on the back. He'd strut around the house. He said, I'd never tried out my dad's gloves, though. He said, I never challenged him. He may not have challenged him, but perhaps some of that boxing and fighter's mentality rubbed off on A.C. because he's really turned into a big competitor for the world. Uh, Look at that. Drexler fight for the ball and flip it back to a teammate on the blind pass. 
Big turnover at 24-23 Portland. Duckworth over Thompson. Doesn't get the bounce. Perkins and Johnson heads the Lakers the other way. Three for Magic and Los Angeles leads 26-24. Pair of threes for Johnson. He has 10. Nobody understands the psychology of three-point better uh, shots better than Magic Johnson and Larry Bird. He's had a couple. He knows his team's back on top. They want to try to keep some pressure on Portland in this first period. Williams misses. Kersey fights for the rebound. Duckworth rechances and out of bounds. It goes to Portland. Fans wanted a foul. Danny Ainge comes in for Portland. As you look at that play again. Offensive rebound is a strong point of the Trailblazers. Duckworth lost control and then trying to fight his way back up. Thought he got fouled. He's out of the ball game. Cliff Robinson in along with Ain. Robinson with the red headband. Number three from Connecticut. Drexler finally misses. Thompson saves for Los Angeles. The Lakers and into the offensive end, it's A.C. Green, and he is fouled. And it's 15 remaining in the opening quarter. Percy from Longwood College of Virginia, Jerome Percy. Confusion down at the Laker end as they're trying to run the 12 play. Whenever you get the defense that much time, there's usually a breakdown, but Perkins makes a big recovery right at the hoop. He's got 10 in a period. Final minute. This game building with a taste of playoff intensity. Rushing on. Kersey off a pick by Ames. Jerome Kersey with five, and it's a one-point game again. Magic looks at the clock. About 11 seconds difference between game clock and the shot clock. Magic doesn't hit, but back to Perkins. One second difference now. And you notice, always aware of all of the things that are going on in the arena. Again, Magic looks at the clock. He knows there's a small difference. He's going to try to hold till they can get the final shot and the best shot before the quarter ends. Magic throws it right into the hands of Kersey. Kersey with three, draws the foul. No basket. Ames batted the ball home, but after the foul. Second on Perkins. Magic wanted to find a cutter across the middle, and the defense did a great job of reacting. And Jerome Kersey is their defensive catalyst, and when he's active and aware of the ball, they force turnovers. He gets in transition. Now they have a chance to finish from the line. Well, he does anticipate those passes in the lane. So. Ties it at 29. There are two key guys for Portland on the offense and the de defense in terms of catalyst. Porter, in terms of hard pushes up and down the floor, gets him into a transition game. And when Kersey is reacting to the ball at the defensive end, the rest of the players seem to take suit. Their defense is alert, aggressive, and really hard for teams to score in in the, in the, in the painted area. Kersey looking for the Portland lead. Has it, and 3.2 seconds. For the Lakers, almost turned over. Tony Smith boxed in, throws up a prayer. And that's the end of a well-played and indeed sometimes intense first period. Mike Dunleavy's Lakers trail by one. are in the playoffs and currently they stack up in that order with Portland going for 13th in a row and 60th win. San Antonio, the leaders in the Midwest with the Lakers a better record, but they're actually in the third seeded position. And at this point it would be Lakers and Houston in the best three of five opening round, but still much to be determined there with that dogfight. San Antonio, Utah, Houston in the Midwest. Magic Johnson says, hey, this one stacks up with a Detroit-Chicago or Boston-Philly series. This is a rivalry. You know that well, Steve. 
it has been one that the country hasn't gotten a chance to see, and they've been invited in this afternoon, and we've had an excellent first quarter of play. Ames just misses. Veteran Walter Davis gets the rebound. Robinson now. Cooper loses it, and it's A.C. Green to Terry Teagle. Teagle, who is red hot on Thursday night against Utah, hits his first shot, and the Lakers back in front. Now, Portland has gone out and short up their bench and had perhaps the best bench in terms of flexibility and depth in the league, but Teagle and Green can neutralize some of that if they get off to a great shooting start. Worthy still cold. Here come the Blazers, down 31-30. They have Ainge, Robinson, the veteran Cooper, and Percy way off the mark is Ames. And Worthy goes up with Robinson, and it'll be on James Worthy. His first. The Lakers have been through this kind of playoff, uh, playoff type of intensity and big game so many times. Rick Adelman is very concerned about his team, particularly the bench. He's trying to tell him right now, settle down, make sure you Sure, you get a good scoring opportunity for James Gibbs. Danny Ames with his first basket. Oregon raised down in Eugene before he went on to BYU. He got booed here when he came back as a Celtic. Booed everywhere. That's right. So they don't remember him until he got a uniform on with the Trailblazer colors on it. He loves it here, that competitive style of this team. Teagle. Rattles it out. Michael Thompson has it picked off by Ames. Took it right out of his pocket. Ames the other way. Walter Davis, the veteran, acquired from Denver. 34-31, the Blazers. And Davis had been struggling and adjusting to becoming a trailblazer because he wasn't doing what he did best, which was shoot the ball. That first shot is a huge confidence builder for him. Ames double teaming on Worthy. Tony Smith underneath the green. Great pass. Great shot by Green. Oh, and a foul on the Lakers. Warded him off with a left hand. Dunleavy, rarely animated, can't believe it. Dunleavy, a sick man suffering from the flu, and this kind of play taken away from him will make him feel worse. He says no way. The Trailblazers get the call. Magic Johnson on the bench for the Lakers. Robinson. And the foul on Robinson. Or no, the three is not for Robinson's number, but for the violation in the lane. Three seconds, and, and with it, a time. Did you know that the Mazda MPV... When the Trailblazers acquired Danny Ainge, many felt that he was the missing piece for the Trailblazer bench in a possible shot at a championship because of his competitiveness and ability to do a lot of things. Comes up with the loose ball, leads the break. Walter Davis on the finishing end. Yeah, Danny told me yesterday, he said, the only thing I want, I don't mind being a sixth man. I just want to be in there at the end of the game. Michael Thompson, the ex-Blazer, is short on his jump hook, gets it back, and is fouled. Walter Davis with a reach in. Paul Thompson, who still makes his home here in Portland, played for the Blazers six years, seven years. The crowd is going to get on Michael Thompson here because they remember his free throwing, which was never good. He's about as good as he's going to get at 71%. And two, because he said the Lakers would overtake the Trailblazers when they had that eight-game advantage. They did for one brief day. A half game in front didn't last long. The real low point for Portland was the loss at home to the Clippers. That was the wake-up call, according to their coach, Adelman. But Robinson, nice move. 36-32, Portland, first points for Robinson. Thompson, the former Minnesota star. Smith for Marquette, the rookie. He has his first points. The book on Smith, of course, is to make him play outside in. A great driver, but he's been practicing that jump shot. Looks good on that one. Percy. Oh, what a kind bounce. Nine for him. Smith, Siegel, Green, Worthy, 
Ian Thompson on the floor for the Lakers. Magic Johnson still a stand up. Smith's coming to a stop is called for the travel. Here comes uh, Buck Williams back in for Portland as Kersey gets a breather. Don't see many travel calls in the NBA. Tony Smith strong on the drive, and that drive is what he was looking for, and he came to a jump start and just took a couple of extra steps when the lane was shut down. The veteran Davis draws the ball and hits the basket. Teagle with a foul. Davis has that ability to strike a match and ignite his team in doing what he does best, which is shoot the ball. Good pump fake got Teagle off his feet. Now we'll see him try to finish at the line for the three-point play. He's traditionally been a great free thrower throughout his career. And he's missed only 10 of 109 this year. 36-year-old veteran from North Carolina. Five points for him. Perkins, Devons, and Magic all return for the Lakers. As Portland celebrates its largest lead of the game, seven. And a foul. Looks like Ames finally had to reach in. He has his second. When you watch Magic working, especially that back end move when they isolate him, that's something he said he learned from Oscar Robinson as a kid watching the Big O on TV. What he does, he finds his man, breaks him down, continues to wheel inside, this time trying to get a score. Devox trying to get the loose ball, and it's stolen by Ames. Robinson. Oh, it's bouncing home for the Blazers. I'm out Los Angeles, and they love that scoreboard in Portland. Such a meaningful opportunity for the Blazers and their fans. Anytime you give a team three opportunities, you usually get burned, but a hustling Danny Ames gets Cliff Robinson out on the open court, and he gets a fortunate bounce right here, and the Trailblazers almost get a goal 10 with the hand of Wayne Cooper, and that's why the crowd has reacted. They've tried to get a little break here, and Dunleavy and Matthew Johnson will now try to find a way to get a score. In this situation, where they've outscored them 7-0, they're going to try to come back to either Worthy, Jerry Teagle on the box against Walter Davis. Worthy way off the mark, and here comes the Blazers looking for more. No one on, Robinson. Williams is fouled by Worthy. Second on James Worthy. Dunleavy really barking at one of the officials. Robinson had the designs of dunking that ball, but took off a little bit too far. But again, it's the offensive rebound and the activity on the board that is giving the Trailblazers an edge here, right here. You see Dunleavy really upset. Meanwhile, on the Portland bench, Wayne Cooper being attended to. They're looking at his left knee. That's eight unanswered points for Portland. And the 36-year-old Dunleavy already ill. This run uh, making him sick as well. for the Lakers. They've got to try to get a chance to score, break the run, get themselves back in the ballgame. Devon's on the switch, and he can't hit the open jumper. Ames pushes it up court. Oh, that's too many. He travels. And then the offensive foul as well. And with that, a 
timeout, 6.53 in the half. And the Lakers looking for someone to score. 1984 by Dallas. Perkins played his college ball with the Tar Heels of North Carolina, signed by the Lakers this year as a free agent. And has contributed with those numbers today. And a reminder, at the end of today's broadcast, we'll be selecting the Miller genuine draft player of the game. Wayne Cooper gets a hand as he goes back to the Portland dressing room, and Joel Myers will check out on that injury. Lakers with only five points in over five minutes of the second quarter, and Portland leaping into an 11-point lead at 45-34, 6.50 left. Down in Los Angeles at the Forum a couple of weeks ago, it was the Lakers by 21 in the third quarter, and the Portland Blazers rallied to win in overtime. They're looking to get James Worthy the ball. They've got to get him involved offensively. They come back to Teagle. Give and go from Magic Johnson. Johnson with another assist as he heads towards Big O's record. Hope Oscar's watching today. That was Magic's idol growing up. Water Davis. Duckworth can't quite get that rebound, but certainly was in position. working on the shorter range and then a beautiful pass underneath and the foul. Duckworth reaching in with a foul. His first. Magic does this so well. Get down on the box and force teams to make an adjustment. Tigo cuts to the hoop. That's the most dangerous kind of cut you can make. And with a passer like Magic Johnson, you're almost assured of getting a chance to score. Perkins on the line. Same kind of play. Magic forcing a defense to make it. Robinson who has a half a dozen. Ten point laser advantage. Eagle around Porter. Former Baylor star has six. So after that run, the Lakers have settled down and come back with three straight scoring possessions. And they might feel that they have a rhythm at the offensive end. Let's see if they can shut down Portland the other way. Drexler slashing and draws the foul from Magic. First on Johnson. That gets a roar from the crowd. The fact that Magic has won in that column. Adelman and the crowd wanted continuation. David Jones, the official, says no. Porter with Teagle. Williams and Perkins bumping inside. Porter unable to get him, and Robinson with a long rebound. Portland struggles whenever they decide to come out really from the corner. Robinson chased that one down. They get a turn out of it anyway. And what Rick Adelman would like to see his team do is pass and cut. That's what hurts the Lakers the most. You talk with Adelman, he uses that word slash a lot, doesn't he? And that does describe well the kind of attack Portland brings. Tegel. Boy, he has the hot hand. And when he is hot, 47-41. Lakers draw within six. He had 20 points against Utah. Nine for 14 shooting Thursday night. it away. Uh, Rick Adelman is telling his team and he senses that they're beginning to stand. They don't have that ball movement, which is really critical to breaking down the Laker defense. If the Lakers can keep you in front of them, they will force you to shoot over the top, rebound the ball, and control the tempo. Eight on the shot clock. Porter, Duckworth. Getting all the bounces, the Blazers. 49-41. That's only his second basket. Two for 11 in the game. Six-point Blazer lead as we approach the four-minute mark. First half. Blazers the boards again today. Robinson. Oh, he's active for a big man. 6'10". In his second year, played for the Huskies. They're in IT championship year in 88. Connecticut, Teagle, again. Ten for Teagle. Teagle has done his job. He's kept the Lakers with him. We're trying to break it back the other way. 
was almost a baseball pitch. Lined it in. 53-45. Evats against Duckworth. Six on the shot clock. Perkins keeps it alive for himself. He earned that too. 13 for Perkins. in the game with 17. You hear the crowd yelling, help him, help him. They realize that they're in a vulnerable position. We'll be starting to try to get scared. Misses that chin. Williams brings it down for Portland, and here's Porter. Duckworth loses it out of bounds, but Devon's got a piece of it. And with that, a timeout, 224 before the intermission. And here in Portland, it's the Blazers by eight. Push it back to 10. Porter and Devot's got a piece of him. Devot's thought that uh, Porter jumped into him, but won't win that argument. That's the third on the Lakers center. 23 years young. You cannot overrate the value of a ball fake. You got a lot of people that try to challenge and block. Devots comes right into Porter. Porter wisely, knowing he's going to get a chance to go to the line, throws the ball in the air. Third point of the game. For a star with the pointers of Wisconsin, Stevens point. Devots goes out with his three. Dunleavy not wanting to risk a fourth. Eldon Campbell, the rookie from Clemson, has replaced him. Campbell with a rebound. Nine point Blazer advantage. Drexler on Magic. Perkins against Buck Williams. Got help from the backside and Porter rebound. Drexler, oh, does he fly? Robinson completes the break. Can't hit it. Out of bounds to Portland. Boy, they get the ball down there in a hurry. You see why the league does not like to run with Portland the best at transitioning. And when Wayne, wait, excuse me, when Cliff Robinson becomes a big finisher like James Worthy, the Trailblazers will have a huge weapon. Foul on Worthy, I believe, for holding, grabbing a jersey. Stay with us at halftime. Prudential halftime report. Cotton Fitzsimmons will be a featured guest. Pat Rossby. Driving to the Buffalo High School system in New York. The 10-point lead. But the foul was on Magic Johnson. So Johnson with two. Worthy also with two. Rebox with three. Siegel. And Drexler rebound. again and that's the biggest blazer lead 12 points minute 12 to go magic wants to force the defense to make an adjustment quarter steal Johnson come across and the anticipation of the defense is what made that play. Porter tipped it, chased it down, beat everyone to it, got the two. Then it's Campbell at the other end trying to make a play at the board over the back of Kevin Duckworth. 
and all of the Trailblazers involved. When Portland starters have great balance, they usually win comfortably, and they're on the way to that kind of game this afternoon. Ten unanswered points, and the Lakers with 46 seconds to go in the half. Six points for James, the leading Lakers scorer on the year. And the Lakers have to get Worthy on track in that second half. They cannot win the game without him. Okay. Duckworth outside to pop again. About a second and a half difference in the game and shot clocks. Terry Porter with a dozen assists in the first half for Portland. The idea of jumping Magic Johnson was to make him pick up the ball. Buck Williams tried to make a play on the ball as well. Fouled him. The Lakers will have 6.9 seconds to finish on a positive note before they go to the locker room. They get it in the hands of the Magic Man. Perkins from three-point range. Drexler rebounds and the horn sounds ending an outstanding half for the hometown Blazers. A half a game away from their 60. Every stop will see if the Lakers are up to the challenge. Both teams start with the same five that opened the game. That means Byron Scott in there for the Lakers and Terry Porter. Nails the first shot of the second half. And with it, the Blazers' biggest lead, 18. On well, that uh, comeback win for Portland in L.A., Rick Adelman, a rare fit of tamper, temper uh, in the locker room, kicked over a table, things went flying, and he really got the attention of the Blazers. He said, it was rare for me, but it just seemed natural. It was sitting there, and I took out all my anger and anxiety. He said, we're going to play or just die right here? And his team rallied brilliantly. Maybe the biggest win of the year. Certainly was the biggest loss of the year for the Lakers. Worthy scores. Uh, everyone confirmed that from Magic right on down through the team, and certainly Mike Dunleavy said, the toughest loss by far. right back for Portland. They got Mag Magic and Worthy right at the well, and when they can do that, then they have a chance to get Worthy in the ball game. Back-to-back -back hoops. Duck worth to Kersey. Way short. That's what, excuse me, Dick, but that's what they want to see Portland do. Shoot that ball quickly from the outside and then be able to come back and get their inside game going. Magic. Oh, what a dish out to Worthy. Unable to hit that one, and Buck Williams draws it in. He led Portland with six rebounds in the first half. LA 22-14. Jerome Percy. Byron Scott. Percy. Wide open as Porter. crowd is on their feet because the Lakers shot quickly from the perimeter and this is what happens when you do that you get a transition opportunity Terry Porter scores and they feel and would have beaten the Lakers three to two head to head and the only thing that's missing from this game so far is Pat Riley <laughs> well, we'll see him we've had a video from last year to Magic Johnson. Worthy with a quick pop. He equals his first half output in uh, two and a half minutes of the second half. And notice, every play has been in his direction. He's got six quick points, but they're down 18. Drexler. What a first step for him to lead all scores. And the foul against the Blazers.
Blazers. Here's the big Kersey, his second. Drexler is great whenever he can find a seam because he's got that great extension, floats right in, an easy scoring opportunity at the other end. They try to get the ball to Worthy, picked up the foul against their own Kersey. That's it held by Clyde Drexler in that multi-million dollar one-on-one -on -one confrontation. Clyde against the Magic Man. They call this foul he reaching in. in Kersey reaching in. You see his reaction. He's not happy. And that is his third personal foul. Johnson with the ball. The Lakers down by 20. Devox to the ball. Can't hit. Perkins funnels it in. Sam Perkins to lead the Lakers. And Duckworth. Turn it over. Charge. The Lakers know that Portland is also subject to give back some of their lead. Dunleavy trying to fire his team up as Duckworth trying to go one-on-one. -on -one. Divac has learned very quickly how to draw a foul, and the ball goes the other way. Scott to Worthy. Worthy hustles it up there, but way short. for Byron Scott and it's 77-60 seven points for Scott Porter left open Scott with the rebound you can see him wins as he went up with the right hand the shoulder the right shoulder was the one that they had iced down heavily yesterday during the practice period and he scores. A little run for the Lakers to cut the lead to 15. Four points for Divas. A little tough for Portland to slow down the tempo. That just isn't their style. Well, it's not their game, and whenever you see them walking the ball up the floor, you have a problem. Drexler trying to come inside again. Blocked by Perkins. Here comes Worthy. Three on one. Himself on the finger roll. Worthy comes out firing, and Portland says that's enough. Timeout. Rick Adelman. Lead get into single figures, and they want to force Portland to play that kind of basketball where they can trap, force the ball to come over the top. Duckworth loses the handle. Worthy the other way for the purple and gold. But the purple reign of nine years may well be ending today in Portland. High lob to Divac. Marks the big trees and able to make the move. 77 66. Drexler. Oh. Down the bottom of the well for Drexler. 23 for him. Drexler has every intention of ending any doubt about who the team is the, the best in the West with this afternoon's performance. Aaron Scott around Williams. Divac to Magic. Divac slumbers inside and gets the foul on a push. Fans wanted the charge. Breaks the defense down is not being aware of where the basketball is, and Portland was not aware of where the ball was in the hands of Magic Johnson. They leave it for Lottie Divac. Divac showing his ability inside as well as out, takes it. The crowd wanted a charge. They call a Duckworth on Duckworth affair. The Lakers stay within 11. Quarter, five and a half minutes to go. Porter would like to get the inside game of Duckworth going, but he's having trouble handling the ball. Perkins takes it away. Scott for the Lakers. Uh, traveling. Scott gets the hoop, and the Lakers are into single digits. Their deficit down to nine. Gary Porter. They get it to the man for three. Duckworth, big offensive rebound and draws the foul. Defensive 
Mobley, the Lakers, with Divac beginning to make some things happen. He poked that one away. They end up fighting the ball away from Kevin Duckworth. The crowd wanted to travel against Byron Scott, who pulls up and knocks that jumper down. Now, when Scott has been a factor against Portland, it's been his great perimeter shooting. Divac will go out of the ball game. Thompson in. Divac with four fouls now, and the veteran Thompson replaces him. Probably does a better job against Duckworth. Thompson is great against any player that plays with his feet to the basket. Very quick reacting off of his feet. Portland getting that second chance on the offensive end. Finally, Magic Johnson, the rebound for Los Angeles. Lakers down by 10. Byron Scott rattles it in, a two-pointer. And it's now 80-72. A 15-3 run for the Lakers. Their first uh, serious run of the entire game. Percy with 13. The Lakers getting better balance in their attack. Scott has helped out. Worthy's off to a big start. Here comes Matt. This is the layup. Scott takes it away from Percy. Worthy. By the quarter for Worthy, 10 points. And 16 in the game. He's averaging nearly 22 in the year. Teams in the NBA when they get big leaps, traditionally will give some of it back. You don't want to see it all melt away. Scott with Kersey. Kersey really hawking him from behind, hustling to try to make another one of those great plays, but Scott able to get it home. And the Lakers pull within just six at 82-76 and a 20-second timeout from Rick Adelman. by Magic Johnson and the Los Angeles Lakers. Scott with a pull-up jumper. And that was one of the nine that he had in the third quarter of play. So Scott has arrived, and he didn't play in the second quarter much at all thanks to the play of Teagle. And then Scott on the end trying to jam. Kersey trying to deny that. But they complete the play. Rick Allen now wants his team to get back to better ball movement. They want to make a stand defensively as the Lakers have scored on almost every possession in this third quarter. 19 to 5, the Lakers outscoring the hometown Blazers in this fourth. Remember that rivalry that Magic spoke of. Give and go to Williams. Blocked by Worthy and the foul on Worthy. Back to uh, Adelman, who grew up in Southern California, very near the Coliseum, was a baseball basketball star before going to Loyola of Los Angeles. And his heroes as a youngster were Sandy Koufax, and he said, and of course, the clutch man, Mr. Clutch Jerry West, and our sympathies go from NBC Sports to Jerry West on the death of his mother, Cecile. He's back to the funeral in Charleston, West Virginia. Was designed to get them back in motion going to the hoop. A little pick and roll with Buck Williams going to the hoop. Drexler dropped it off. They pick up the foul. Thompson out. AC Green in. Williams looking for his ninth point, averaging a little over 11. His points are down, but his field goal percentage way up this year, second in the league. Lakers down by seven with three and a half left in the third. Worthy. Knocked out of bounds by Portland. Edelman born to be a coach, and a good one he has become here in Portland. Eight his dues. Scott left alone, takes it to the front. Byron Scott, former Arizona State star, and it's a five-point game. Green fighting for that rebound, and Drexler takes it away. That was after the Drexler steal. Scott for three. Oh, my. What a 
quarter for Byron Scott. 18 points in the game. 14 in this period. Order back for a deuce. 88. 81. Right, we have a firefight, but that's the only way you can maintain a lead and cut into a lead. you got to make some shots. Scott red hot right now, resembling the Scott that used to come in here and tear the Trailblazers apart. Two minutes left in the third. Alone. Three. Oh, is he hot? 21 points for Byron Scott. Many thought he wouldn't play today. 88-84. Sometimes you play your best games when you're not feeling well, and Scott's come up with one dig here this afternoon, 17 in the quarter. Tossed a goose egg against Utah. Didn't score in half a game. Oh, Robinson with a push, and that'll cost Portland. Oh. Sometimes he draws a goose egg when he changes. Well, in mourning at the moment, that black's appropriate as the Lakers have gone from 20 down to within four, and this possession for Magic just misses the three, and Perkins gives the Lakers another chance. Magic to Siegel. 113 left in the third period. Scott with 10. He's the hot hand, and he hits again. Two-point lead for Portland, and this is just a return favor of what Portland did to the Lakers in Los Angeles. And remember what I said about making Magic Johnson a score. He has not scored in the quarter. 19 for Byron Scott, 10 for Jane Worthy. Well, Williams and Perkins really bad on the inside, and the steal by Scott. And with 40 seconds left in the quarter, here comes Johnson with a chance for a tie or the lead for L.A. The third quarter where the Lakers fell apart in Los Angeles. Scott again misses, and Williams hauls it down. Tipped by Kersey, but magic for the Lakers. 21 seconds to go. They'll go for the final shot. Magic ties it up. His first points of the period. From 20 down in the third to a brand new game. Final shot for Porter. He hits it. Boy, that's a big answer. A three-pointer. And that gives Portland a 91-88 lead after three. And we'll return to the Coliseum after these messages and a word from your local station. Johnson realized he had a chance to get a score, broke the defense down, but Porter perhaps made the biggest shot for the Trailblazers when he came back and nailed the three-pointer as the quarter ended, and the Lakers have fought themselves back into the ball game. Porter had a dozen of Portland's 26 third period points to keep them in the lead. 91-88 after the Lakers had made up the 20-point deficit in that third period. We go to the fourth, the top two teams in the West. We hope you'll be with us uh, next Saturday of the Lakers and the Utah Jazz in Salt Lake City. And we have a big doubleheader for you tomorrow here on NBC. And one of the reasons that teams can come from behind, you've got 24-second shot clock, you've got to turn the ball over, and the defense gets stiffer, teams get the ball from the perimeter. The other team also makes some shot. Lakers had two huge heroes in Worthy and Scott. Teagle forcing that jumper, but that's how he likes it. Just at the 24-second buzzer, leaning away from his de defensive man, and it's 91-90. Ames answers for Portland. And he aims with four off the bench. It's a painful call against Magic Johnson. He comes across the middle and quickly wheels in, and he said he didn't touch him, and the pitcher shows he did. He's at the other end, however, hits the three. Now hold on, they're going to call that a two. 95-90 as Ames back-to-back -back hoops. And uh, Ames a little too zealous on that defensive effort. Scott, who had that red hot 
third period. Oh, that's that technical foul now against the Lakers. Scott being iced down that left shoulder after his brilliant third period, and things turn icy for Dunleavy as his team picks up the technical foul, and Terry Porter goes to the other end to shoot it. Magic Johnson still unhappy about the call against him when he's right around Ames. Well, Magic rarely gets into it with officials, but he wanted to make this point with David Jones, and David Jones made his point that kick call or no kick call, he's running the show, and the Trailblazers pick up a cheap point. The Lakers will try to come back and score. 96-90 Portland. 10.43 left in the fourth period. Perkins from Magic. And a foul. Basket is good. Let's go back to what Magic did to uh, earn that tee. You see Ainge reach in, and the call goes against Ainge and the Trailblazers, and now Magic wants to make a point about the call the time before, and all of his comments are in the direction of the official David Jones. Some of those comments even shook our videotape replay. <laughs> Magic so rarely losing that big smile, happy demeanor of his. That hides a lot of fire underneath, though. He is a great competitor. Three-point game, Portland in the lead. With Robinson. Worthy. And the foul on Robinson jumping in. That's his third. But Robinson who knows he missed a golden opportunity. He was right at the well. His momentum took him a little bit away and trying to chase it, picked up the foul. The Trailblazers see Magic Johnson go to the bench. Tony Smith then, they perhaps, if they can apply some pressure, can get some breathing room, they can force Smith to make some mistakes. Johnson with 13 assists today. Leaves him just 11 from the record held by Big O. Green misses, but tips it. Was it on the rim? Yes. No basket is Green after missing the easy shot. How do, you, how do you miss an opportunity at point blank range? You rush the shot. That's what Green did, and then knowing that, trying to get it back, goal 10. That would have made it 96-95. Aim. Perkins. And Tony Smith playing for Magic Johnson. The rookie from Marquette. Perkins thinking about a three for a moment. Tigo wants to find the body. They double him. Tony Smith. Rebound, Buck Williams. Williams who leads Portland on the year in rebound. In nine and a half a game. Now Robinson picks up the foul on the drive. And it appears to be... Looking for his first point in the second half. Those headbands will kill you sometimes. <laughs> Get that red one out. I think uh, Coach Edelman looking for one right now. There's the point, and it does it on the game for Robinson. Four-point Portland lead. Plenty of time. But the Lakers want from Smith and the bench is poised under fire. They want to try to continue to keep Worthy in the ball at the offensive end. Six on the shot clock. Teagle with three. And Robinson rebounds. Teagle knocks it away. And a foul on Teagle. Well, tomorrow we hope you'll be with us. NBA on NBC, and my buddy Al McGuire and Don Crickey will call the Knicks Celtics games. He'll tell you how he used to hold Kuzi to 20 points. Of course, he fouled out in the first quarter. Uh, San Antonio will play Phoenix in the nightcap. Marvin Mike will be there. So, big Sunday twin bill for you, NBA here on NBC. Now the bench uh, got Portland a break, and they've got those players back in. We'll see if they can get involved. Duck short, short. AC Green, he's a tough rebounder. Does play his role well for the Lakers. Every team needs a guy that can energize them, and that's what Green does for the Lakers. As a starter, uh, and they brought Perkins, they weren't getting that kind of energy. Were they with Perkins getting the second chance? And he is fouled. Perkins with a putback, makes it 97-96. This is their fifth game of the year. Each has won two. The two Portland wins in overtime. Veteran Davison 
Duckworth, oh, I thought he got away with that little skip to start, but he didn't. A delay whistle, but a correct call. Portland guilty of overpassing that time. Davis passed up a good opportunity, and they ended up turning the ball over as Duckworth was trying to get himself set and poised. The Lakers with a chance to take the lead. L.A.'s last lead was the first basket of the second quarter when they went in front 31-30. Then they fell behind by as much as 20 in the third period, made up the deficit. And now a chance for the lead. With Magic on the bench. Perkins, Ames can't stop it, and Perkins, a tough angle jumper. Los Angeles by one. Notice how the Laker defense has now gotten energized with making some hoops. Well, as close and as competitive as they've been these last couple of years, these rivals in the West. Siegel with Ames on the double team. Worthy. Way off. Wide open down court is Robinson. Perkins to beat. He put pressure on Sam Perkins and the Laker defense. Robinson had ideas of going over the top. The crowd wanted a flagrant foul, which would have resulted in two shots and possession. So Perkins takes a rest as Devots comes back in. two for four from the line today. 198. Shot only 55% last year as a rookie. He's boosted that to 66% this year from the line. Robinson has improved in almost every category because his shot selection and his patience and his understanding of the NBA style of play came along with the year's experience. Magic Johnson has been on the bench since the 10-28 mark. That's now uh, three and a half minutes. Tony Scott. Duckworth taps it out and uh, unable to save is Walter Davis. Big inside pass from Worthy to Tony Smith, and Smith was not aware of where the defense was. Had to force up a tough shot. Portland did not get it back. The Lakers have six on the shot clock. So quick to point out as he jumped off his team, came down there mid-court. Yell out that information. Worthy. Oh, a two-pointer barely missed the tray. Whoops, a little push and shot between A.C. Green and Kevin Duckworth. And Mike Dunleavy is out on the court. He is furious. Boy, this is really out of character for Dunleavy. Dunleavy saw something the officials did not. He's pointing to his knee as if he, he felt that uh, Duckworth started it with a knee. We'll take another look at it if we can, although it was away from the ball. Well, John Gonzalez, our director, and David De The Lakers trying with this stand here to keep that collar on the trailblazers that in a big game, they could beat them should they meet in the conference final. Dressler earns a tough two, and it's 103-100. Not unlike the Pistons and the Bulls in Detroit, although they're not going to win this year in their division, still reminding the Bulls are around. Last touch by home. No one seems to know. You know, you know that business about King of the Hill, and who's ever up there is going to try to stay up there. The Trailblazers get the call. Dunleavy is saying, no way. He thought the Blazers tipped the ball on the pass. It's Magic's pass. The ball hit the rim and bounced out. 103, 100. Oh, he gets the technical. That's right, he said. Looks like that was Bush. Uh, well, he went up very nice. Point lead 
Those points coming on technical shots. One against Magic, one against Dunley. Porter falling away and hit. A two-pointer, 21 for him, and the Blazer lead is six. Six minutes to go. Magic on the ground, rejected by Drexler. Ains goes right out of bounds with it, and that will go to Los Angeles, and Ains is unhappy. Now he's saying, I was out of bounds. I threw it on Devots, and they're saying Devots was out of bounds as well, so he carried the ball out. Strong drive by Magic Johnson. Better play by Clyde Drexler to knock it away. The hustle by Ains. You see they're both standing out of bounds. Every time I see Drexler play, I can't believe he's only 6'7". He plays like he's 6'11". Divac inside. How they call that one? A push on Divac? No. Foul in Portland. Across the arms on Drexler. Winning. Clyde Drexler now the all-time Portland scorer in his career. That show you how big Drexler plays at 6'7". He was hawking defensively. Divac at 7'1". That last game. Last play when he fouled. Overworthy. 27 for Drexler. Timeout, Los Angeles. So come on, you Lakers, give it your best shot, because against those Blazers, you ain't worth squat. I don't know. Uh, that's, uh, that may make the charts up here in the Northwest. Well, it certainly will be the number one tune, but we've got five minutes left in this ball game, and the Lakers have showed that there's no quit in them. Portland will have to defend them and make them become a premier team. Perkins. Look for the three. He finds the tray. 108, 103, and a big goal for Perkins, who leads the Lakers with 26. Magic looking for a turnover. The veteran hustling in the back door. It was Scott and Worthy, and now it is Perkins as they try to double on Drexler. Tips it in. Oh, he went right through the Lakers to tip that one home. Drexler with 29. Portland. It almost looked like he hit the Laker hand on this. Let's take another shot at it. Drexler spun in, and one of the things that Drexler does very well for a guard is offensive rebound very quick off his feet with the left hand, gets the hoop, but they're coming back through Sam Perkins right now. Perkins with a huge fourth quarter with 11 and back on the line. And 21 of 29 from the field. Boy, that is great shooting from the two stars. Porter in the backcourt and Drexler inside. This is their bread and butter play. They want to force the switch. They don't do it. Porter with nine. Throws it away. A rare turnover. The play Porter. was intended to find Duckworth rolling to the hoop. Threw it too high. But Williams couldn't chase it down. The Lakers have it with a chance to close to within three. 100 to 105, Portland leads it. And there is Drexler taking it from Magic. And then Magic from the backside forces a turnover. Boy, is that high priced talent on display. You'll see Drexler with great reaction get out in the open court. He wanted this hoop all the way. Scott makes him go behind the back. He lost it and bobbled it out of bounds. Right there to try to uh, pickpocket him. Five point Portland lead. And they want to make Portland make a decision. Do you give help to Magic or does he find someone that's open? Worthy for three. James Worthy and won't fall. And there remains a five point Portland advantage with 3.30 to go. Designed for Drexler, and they like to force him away from the box. They do now. They get help. Ooh, worthy in the steal. Porter. Rare miss for him. Magic to Scott. And a foul. Curse. 
Percy again. Boy, does he get back on defense. Percy streaking again and denying. That's the second time he's denied an easy dunk on a breakaway. They get Terry Porter with a tough shot, and Magic Johnson looks up to find Scott ahead of the pack, but Kersey will not give in. Comes across, they pick up the personal foul. Scott has been tremendous from the second half long. That's his 24th point of the game, his first from the free throw line. From that angle, and you hear the booing reaction of the Portland fans. Uh, didn't appear that Kersey uh, really got a piece of him. He just uh, looked as if he might have fouled him. Fourth foul on Kersey. 1 0, 1 10, 1 0, 7. Dunley be sitting by that heating pad in case Scott needs some more on that shoulder. Now these teams started the, the preseason playing each other and they played this way. This game is in Indy. The they want to be the best and whoever comes out of this, they feel will win the championship. Lakers with a win trying to pull it in too. Just keep pressure on Portland with four games to go and improve their own chances of a home court advantage. Portland wants it all. And there are now two and a half minutes from just that, the Pacific Division title. Perkins for three. And Duckworth battles away, and it's going to be on Devox. And he says, what did I do wrong? Dunleavy with a smile, as if to say, how could it be? Five on Devox. Perkins from the outside, but you'll see Devox holding Duckworth. He takes the worst for the hold as he goes down, but trying to draw the foul, the reaction. 2.25 to go. Duckworth against Steve Otz, the double team. And the travel. He was dancing. The Lakers know if they can put pressure on Kevin Duckworth. He's not a good passer. He sometimes gets a little nervous. Anxiety, he drags the foot. The Lakers have the ball. It's Magic against Drexler again at the Laker end. Johnson down the alley to Worthy. 112, 109, Worthy with 20. Just under his average. 145 to go, and now it's counting possessions. The quicker you make the decision offensively, the better your chances of scoring. They try to squeeze Drexler. That will be the 15th foul against the Lakers, so it will turn out to be a shooter and a foul on Diva. He is six, so that's all for him. Magic Johnson down the lane, beats the defense with his penetration and pass to Worthy, who's right at the rim. So Worthy has been able to get a wake-up call. He's at 14 in the second half. Devots leads with eight, and a rare miss by Drexler from the line. 80% free throw shooter. Magic now with 15 assists in the game. Duckworth goes out, and Robinson returns. And Robinson, there's a, oh, wow, I was afraid he'd forgotten the headband. Uh, you thought he, he should have brought back the red one and down to crunch time. Drexler missed them both. Buck Williams pushes off, so you result in a shooter. Oh. A one-point game with 136 left, and Perkins matches his Laker high of 30. And here is Scott on Porter with Worthy taking Drexler. You're going to give Duckworth a chance to go one-on-one -on -one against Perkins. No foul. Down. Easy two for Duckworth. Perkins looking for the flop foul. Didn't get it. In this situation, they like to go with a two-man game. Magic Johnson and James Worthy. They want to drop the ball inside to Worthy. Over Drexler. Not there. Present Porter with a ball, and less than a minute to go. Portland by three. Drexler wanted to go. They want to use some time on the clock, and then they want to try to come back with a two-man game and take advantage of Duckworth. Porter with five. Can't hit it. Magic 
with 20, 38 seconds left in the game. They hit this guy and he misses it. Seven seconds left in the game. Magic seventh turnover. Fifteen assists for Johnson in the game. Three-point lead, Portland. Drexler with ten. exactly where the shot is going to come from, but the result gets the crowd to... ...name is Clyde Drexler of uh, Portland Trail Blazers on behalf of NBC and Miller. Genuine draft, $1,000 donation to the Thurgood Marshall Scholarship Fund, and you talk about a big star playing big in a big game. Drexler, 31 points. 70% from the floor, 14 out of 20, throwing four assists, five rebounds, and a couple of steals. And the Blazers are 15 seconds away from dethroning the nine-time Laker champions, nine in a row. They'll be painting that Mount Hood snow red and black. In this situation, the Lakers want a quick score. They don't have to have a three, but they have to have a, a score. They couldn't get the ball in, so they're going to have to take another timeout. The quick score and the quick foul now is all that's left for Dunleavy. As his mind goes out to be a part of it, it would really mean a lot to Magic, I know. Green for three. And in it, Perkins rebounds. Hits the two. 8.6 seconds left. Portland by three, and the foul by Worthy. That's your only choice, but Sam Perkins has really come up big this afternoon. To seal the game, if he gets them both, that should mean victory for certain. 16 assists, ties his five of the year, and there's the four-point lead. Green goes out, and Teagle comes in, a shooter, and Cliff Robinson is in for Buck Williams. Well, oh, they love Williams here. What a fit to get this uh, number one draft pick from uh, New Jersey in 1981 of the number one pick. And traded for uh, Sandwich, number one, last year. Five-point lead, Johnson for three. Doesn't hit it. Less than a second remains. And they can stand up and celebrate. The new Pacific Division champions are the red and black of the Portland Trailblazers. left in these final two weeks of the season and one can only hope after this that these two teams might play again before this NBA season is history. That's the story from Portland. Let's go to Bob Costas in New York. Going on in Portland, Clyde Drexler has the headset on. He joins us now and I say mini celebration, Clyde, because there are many plateaus to reach along the way and I know that this club will not be satisfied until the ultimate celebration. Exactly. I think our team has really been playing well the last two years, and I think uh, the only thing that will really top everything off would be to win an NBA championship. We know there's a lot of hard work involved. Uh, the playoffs are about to start, and I think we're ready. Clyde, it's been a long time. Actually, you can go back to 1983 when the Houston uh, Cougars didn't get it done against North Carolina State, but it's been seven or eight years of you playing at Portland and always being behind the Lakers. Do you feel personally and as a team that you finally broken through? I think we finally broke close last season when we won the Western Conference. I think uh, the Lakers have been so good for so long, Pat. You know about that. But uh, we've been chasing them forever, it seems like. And this year we finally stayed atop of them for the Pacific Division. And it really feels good, but our work is unfinished. I think we'll, we'll continue to work hard until we win the big one. 
Clyde, you won the season series head-to-head -head against the Lakers, winning today at home, and the last time you played them, they had you down 20 or so at the forum. You came back and won in overtime. Is the psychological advantage gained from that something for sportscasters and sports writers and fans, or does it really mean something to the players? I think it, re it really means something to the players as well as the fans. I think it means that you can come back regardless of the situation. I think it gives you team confidence. It builds the team morale. And I just think it's, it's a good feeling. It builds confidence. One last thing before we let you go here. You've won 13 in a row now. The club was relatively flat in February and March. Why the turnaround? That's a good question. I just think that uh, the team was playing so well. Everything was going so good. I think we kind of lost perspective. I think we were not playing the type of defense which enabled us to have the good record. And that when we got back to the basics, uh, we seemed to have good success. Clyde, congratulations on winning the Pacific. We'll talk to you throughout the playoffs. Let's take a look now at where things stand in the Western Conference. Portland has won the Pacific. They will have the best record in the conference. In all likelihood, they'll have the best record in the league. They've all but eliminated Chicago in that regard. So they'd have home floor advantage against anybody as long as they stay alive. But some of the other playoff brackets could change between now and the end of the regular season. Portland will go against Seattle, but in the middle, there are still races going on, especially in the Midwest. Well, especially with uh, Phoenix and Utah, San Antonio and Houston, you know, we've talked a lot about those four teams trying to find playoff position. But, Bob, a note on Portland. Portland did what great teams have to do. They had a chance to come and close out, make a statement. And when you get to that opportunity of finally winning it, you have to get the job done. It looked as though today they might have had some of these old Laker nightmares come up, but they got the job done. They got everything they need out here in the West, and now it's all up to them the rest of the way. Well, we have a chance. We'd like to remind you about the doubleheader tomorrow on NBC. There it is. Don Crickey will pair with Al McGuire. When was the last time that Al called an NBA game? You know, he used to play for the Knicks, and he used to play a lot in Boston Garden, and he always said that he was the one guy in the league back in the 50s who could put the clamps on Bob Cousy. Of course, he usually <laughs> fouled out during the first quarter. But in any case, Knicks and Celtics to open it, then San Antonio and Phoenix in the second half of the doubleheader. Marv and uh, Mike will call that one. We're going to hear a lot of wide bodies and, what, aircraft carriers tomorrow from Al, I bet, right? All right, we've got <laughs> one minute here, and it's time for round 11. What? Of the shootout. What's that? Round 11? Is that golf Let's match? take a look at uh, Give me where ball. things stand. I am at 80% as the upset may be in the making, but between now and the end of the playoffs, many more shots to be taken. Now, since you are trailing, I give you the option. You want to shoot yeah, first or second? There's no light on the basket. Well, you can still see it through the but shadows. there's no light. Riley from a seated position. Off the back iron. There's no light up there. Now he's begun to complain <laughs> about the playing conditions, the last refuge of a basketball scoundrel. You know, a lot of people have asked, what's the distance? Yeah, what is it? It's about 12 feet for you. It's a little bit less than 15. It's not a true foul shot. For me, it's about 15 feet from here. Give me the other ball. This one's a little dead. I like the lively ball. I like the lively ball. ball. Like, you know, I need a bounce. I'm protesting. This is my first chance to open up a real lead. Let me loosen the jacket here. Here we go. God. God, I'm why? Gonna live this down. <laughs> I'm up by two. I'm just toying with him. It's too easy. See you tomorrow.